Fraser Island lies parallel to almost 100 miles of the southern Queensland coastline. It has rare and unspoiled beauty and is regarded as one of the finest light gear fishing grounds in Australia. It's now possible to travel almost the entire length of the beaches by using a four-wheel drive vehicle and avoiding the rainy seasons when the beach creeks are in flood. The LV Land Rover is a familiar sight in the area as the executives of the company use this beach as a testing ground to prove the efficiency of new designs or modifications. A short eight mile drive along Rainbow Beach brings Hook Point into sight where a ferry service has been established. The Fraser Dawn, a 40 foot ex-army landing barge, takes suitable vehicles across the southern entrance of Wide Bay Harbour in 15 minutes. The barge can operate on only the last three hours of the ebb tide. Many freshwater streams enter the sea along the beach, but all are shallow and can be crossed safely at slow speed. Wildflowers and animals on the island are almost undisturbed and the land presents a natural, primitive atmosphere. Further up the beach is the decaying wreck of the Mahino, a vessel which broke adrift while being towed to Japan as scrap iron in July 1935. During World War II, the wreck was used for Air Force target practice and 19 unexploded 250 pound aerial bombs have recently been discovered, barely covered by the sand on which the rover is travelling. Almost 60 miles of beach are covered before the anglers Jack Alvey and Keith Peel are satisfied that they have found an ideal surf gutter, suggesting it could hold fish. A rough camp is erected for an overnight stay and the fishing gear made ready. The wide expanse of hard beach sand is apparent as Jack begins fishing. A chain flight of 450 hooks is baited with whole sea garfish, one of the best baiting methods for tailor fishing on the coastline. Good casting distance is achieved even when no lead weight is used and the reel is quickly brought back to fishing position. Action happens almost immediately when a fish eagerly takes the bait. The power of the LV reel and the cushion of the flexing rog combine to bring the fish to shore without trouble, even on the light line. The fish are plentiful, so it's not long before the fishermen are unloading bags. After washing in a nearby creek, they're laid out on boards to allow the flesh to firm before filleting and storing. All our school tailor, weighing from two to four pounds, and they had provided good sport. Besides being a fast fighting fish to catch, Taylor are also an excellent food fish when properly prepared. Later in the afternoon, a few more casts are made to see if the fish are still feeding in the gutter, and every bait produces immediate interest. There are just as many fish about, and those caught are of slightly better size. At sundown, a dingo comes close to the camp. It shows none of the cunning or fear of this breed, even though we are catching fish very close to it. A blazing fire gives comfort through the night, and at daybreak the rover reloaded and heads further up the island towards Indian Head. Some beach worms are caught for bait and a small surf pocket suitable for whiting fishing is found. The summer whiting does not grow to a large size but can be good fun when fished for with the lightest of lines. The whiting has also a deserved reputation as one of the most palatable and digestible of all fish. 
It's often prescribed for invalids and elderly people. Many good anglers who confine their whiting fishing to estuary waters are not aware of the quantity and quality which can be caught in the right surf waters. After a few more fish are caught, they set off to see more of Fraser Island. The sand dunes are crossed behind Indian Head and the delightful small bay which runs up to Middle Rock comes into view. In these clear waters, fish can be seen schooling a short distance offshore. From the headlands of Middle Rock and Waddy Point, the view is great. The extensive pattern of beach formation is clearly defined and there are so many likely looking holes and gutters that an angler could be confused. Looking north, the tourist resort of Orchid Village is just visible in the distance. After a little more sightseeing, a beach area south of Indian Head is chosen for more tailor fishing. Even though the tide has altered, the fish are very willing to cooperate. When tailor indulging in a feeding spree, there is seldom a long wait for a bite. But fishing should be done without undue loss of time, for often tailor will suddenly stop biting for no apparent reason. The speed with which these fish are hooked and brought ashore is a tribute to the anglers, the method and the gear they are using. It's rare to see a bite missed and each fish is controlled and played right up to the breaking strain of the light line. Even when heavy tidal sweep forces the use of lead weight, the action of the reel is used to give movement to the bait and the fish are just as eager to attack it. At all times there seems to be a tailor either being played, landed or carried up to the beach. The flesh will keep firmer and better if the fish is bled after capture by breaking the gill connections. A cast, the bent rod and another tailor comes to shore. This simple and efficient method of catching beach fish is not reserved for the experts but can be easily learnt by the average angler. Further down the beach, Keith has hooked something fairly big. Meantime, Jack is giving the fish no let up and is catching a tailor with every cast. The heap of fish in our catch is growing progressively bigger. The big fish has now been worked closer to shore and is twisting, turning and making frantic dashes in its attempt to escape from the line. But as it is slowly edged into very shallow water, struggling vainly, it's identified as a shovel-nosed shark. Harmless to humans, it's not a true shark, but actually a member of the ray family. While the flesh of this species can be eaten, it is coarse and not highly rated as a table fish. As it is not classed as a prize capture, it's decided to beach it as quickly as possible and liberate it before it becomes exhausted and drowns. Though there is plenty of fight still in the fish, it is dragged ashore by the tail. A rough estimate is made of its weight and it's freed from the hooks. The powerful struggles of the big fish make it difficult to carry back to sea. Finally, it is dragged out to deeper water by the tail. It soon recovers and swims away. Meanwhile, Jack is still catching Taylor a few yards further up the beach. But the storage capacity of the freezer has been reached, so a halt is called, even though fish are still biting savagely. Certainly the island has lived up to its reputation. Over 100 fish, even though no fishing was done in darkness, 
which could have been even more productive. With a sharp boning knife and a little practice, it's not difficult to cut a fillet from each side of a tailor. By removing a rib cage, no annoying bones are left in the flesh. The skin and scales are left on the fillet and removed just prior to cooking. Using this method, there is little wastage and storage space is saved. Well, the time has come to begin the return trip along the beach to the mainland crossing. Here there are large hills of beautiful multicoloured sands shaped by the passage of time and given such picturesque names as the cathedrals. It's a sight which would be hard to equal anywhere else in the world. A short stop to see if fish were also in this part of the beach. Even though these waters did not appear as well formed, a fish takes the bait shortly after it is cast. As it is wound through these placid surf waters towards shore, the constant even line tension gives the fish very little chance of freeing itself. As no more fish are needed, this tailor is to have a lucky escape. By getting it ashore before it is totally exhausted, handling it with wet hands and unhooking it carefully, Jack is able to return it to the water in good condition to live and fight another day. The fish quickly takes advantage of this unexpected liberty. A call is made to the small holiday settlement at Happy Valley. A twisting path was negotiated through the Yidney rocks which cover the sands from the hills to the water's edge. Near Barge Crossing, some white dolphins cruise in pace with the Land Rover as if bidding a farewell. Across the ferry and back on Rainbow Beach, the ramp soon appears, which will lead back to sealed roads and civilization. We hope you enjoyed the record of the trip to Fraser Island, and will always remember it's the LV reel that fills the creel.